This is question 3 of the June 2015 Unit 2 Physics paper. On screen now is the first part of the mark scheme for this question, so please mark your work. You may wish to pause the recording to do this, then I'll move the slide forward so you can see the second part of the mark scheme. On screen now is the second part of the mark scheme for question 3, so please mark the rest of the question. Once you've finished marking this, I suggest you listen to the rest of the recording if you've got any parts of this question incorrect, so you know how to do the question correctly in the future. The first part of question three is all factual recall, um, so you should be quite straightforward if you've, if you've done the revision and you understand what it is. So many countries use nuclear power stations to generate electricity. Nuclear power stations use processes of nuclear fission to release energy. What is nuclear fission? Well, that's the key definition from the topic. A nuclear fission is a splitting of large nuclei to form smaller nuclei. Please be aware you can't have atom. So splitting, splitting of large nuclei to form smaller nuclei. It also releases energy. Plutonium-239 is one substance. This is three-part A, part two. Plutonium-239 is one substance used as a fuel in a nuclear reactor. For nuclear fission to happen, the nucleus must absorb a particle. What type of particle must be absorbed? That's a neutron. And that will get you the mark there as well. So that's a neutron. So three part B we move on to now. So nuclear fusion also releases energy. Nuclear fusion happens at very high temperatures. A high, temp a high temperature is needed to overcome the repulsive forces between the nuclei. Why is there a repulsive force between the nuclei of atoms? That's because they have the same charge. Uh, which should get you the mark. But you could also have the, the idea that the nuclei are positive. I should put plus VE to represent positive, but you could obviously write that out yourself, and that will get you the mark as well. So the idea that um, nuclei are positive, and positive charges or light charges or same charges repel one another. Where does nuclear fusion happen naturally? So where would you explain ex, um, expect to see nuclear fusion happening is B part 2. I should take this up here, uh, and that happens in stars. And that will get you the mark there. So nuclear fusion naturally occurs in stars, main sequence stars mostly, and nuclear fusion <coughs> is happening currently in our sun at the moment in time. So the next part of question 3C gets it's more difficult. It says in 1991 scientists produced the first controlled release of energy from an experimental nuclear fusion reactor. This was achieved by fusing the hydrogen isotopes of deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is naturally occurring and can easily be extracted from seawater. Might want to put a, a note around that one. Tritium can be produced from lithium. Lithium is also found in seawater. Uh, the energy released from one kilogram of fusion fuel and one kilogram of fission fuel is shown. Um, and you can see that the fusion fuel here is larger. It says, suggests two advantages of the fuel used in fusion reactors compared with plutonium and the other substances used as a fuel in a fission reactor. So yeah, the first thing that you know is from the question, there's two really clear ones. Um, you've got the idea that more energy is released per kilogram. Which I've just taken um, from that part there, which I've, what we've got. And the other part of the question, it says, uh, can easily be extracted from seawater. Um, and the idea is easy to obtain or extract materials. Those are the ones that the information is given to you in the question to get those two answers. There are other answers to this question. The other two answers that you could have had is the idea that um, there's lots of deuterium and tritium available and there's lots of that naturally occurring as well. So that's the idea that there's, there's a large source of that fuel. And also another one that you might know um, is that nuclear fusion produces very little radioactive waste compared to nuclear fission. 
So you could have had either of those two as well. So the next part of the question says, some scientists think that by the year 2050, a nuclear fusion power station capable of generating electricity on a large scale will have been developed. So it's one important consequence of developing nuclear fusion power stations to generate electricity. Well, there's lots of important consequences here. Um, the idea that it's another source of energy, so it reduces demand on other types of energy sources. The idea that it doesn't generate large amounts of radioactive waste. Um, the idea that it'll be a re reliable source. Um, but you can see from these ones here, it's a like, accept an essential suggestion. So if you're unsure whether or not you've been awarded the mark, or you should award yourself the mark, please see your teacher. But you can see the idea that it makes another source of energy available, increases the supply of electricity, able to meet global demand, less environmental damage, and reduce the amount of other fuels used. Well, the exam examiners are expecting to see, but there are other ones as well. In the last part of the question, it says tritium is radioactive. It says after 36 years, only 10 grams of tritium remains from an original sample of 80. Calculate the half-life of tritium. So the first step is you've started with 80. How many half-lives have you got to get to 10? So 80 goes down to 40 with one half-life. What is that? When it halves, so that's one. 40 will then half to 20. So we've now had two half-lives. And 20 will half to 10. So there you can see that we have had three half-lives. So we have three half-lives. That will get you one mark. The next bit is to work out the number of years for one half-life. So in 36 years we've had three half-lives, which means that one half-life would be 36 over 3. If you're good at maths, you'll be able to do that in your head. If you're not, you should just put it into a calculator and you work out that 36 divided by 3 gives you 12. So 12 half-lives. Um, 12 years is, a, is the half-life of this isotope. If you've just got 12, half, 12 years in the box, you get two marks for the question. Uh, but that shows you how I would go about working out that question. That brings us in the question now. So thank you again for listening.